Good morning, here we are at Big Plant Nursery. We're going to pot up one of our grass trees, uh, Zamphoria prezii, um, imported by us. These are amongst the hardiest of all the Australian grass trees. As you can see, they're standing out enjoying our lovely uh, sunshine. So to start with, we've chosen a container. The container is around 50 centimetres. I guess it's about ultimately but 10 centimetres wider than the diameter of the container of the grass tree. So allowing a 10 centimetre or five centimetre all the way around growing area. In the bottom of the container, uh, we've put some perlite. Perlite is um, an inert um, substance, a bit like polystyrene. Um, it, it's just there because it's light and it aids drainage. And to it, I've added uh, some Cornish grit. Cornish grit or a non-calcareous grit. That's a grit without lime in it. I've lined the pot as well, which is quite an interesting thing. It's with the bubble plastic. That um, will protect it when it gets a bit cooler. Um, makes the environment for the roots a bit more stable as well. And is also obviously a degree of frost protection. The compost we've mixed is an ericaceous compost. It's a peat-free compost, like all the compost we use here. A nice open peat-free compost. And to that we've added the same Cornish grit or the non-calcareous um, grit, which is, I think it's from the old um, um, China clay mines from the washings, but it's a really lovely grit. And uh, all those of you down in the West Country will be familiar with it. Uh, again, it's really important to try and avoid lime. So, uh, uh, the sort of compost that you use for growing rhododendrons or azaleas. A nice, good quality compost. So there we are. The, um, obviously the problem for most of you, I guess, is, the, is how you get the grass tree into the pot. Brute force, I'm afraid. Invite your friends and neighbours and uh, you're going to have to lift it. Um, we're a little bit cheeky here in that we've, um, we're cheating and we've got a telehandler. So um, apologies for that, uh, but there's just um, just myself and uh, and uh, Simon helping me. So uh, here we go, the next phase. So we've cut the, um, the the bag. It's kind of like a nylon uh, bag that they're they're growing in, or acclimatized for container cultivation. The compost they're growing in is, um, as you can see, it's a mixture of uh, shredded uh, wood chip and bark. Uh, and within it, there is um, some fine sandy um, material too, uh, which is something we're going to try and replicate with our very open, gritty compost. So I'll just stand back. Simon is going to pull off the container. And there you are, you can see the, um, the root ball. Very strange um, black roots. Quite remarkable, really. Very unusual looking. What we want to try and do is disturb it as little as possible now. Obviously, these have uh, been taken from the wild. They've been acclimatized in these containers for a couple of years. So we don't really want to disturb it too much. We just want to get it into its new home. So uh, next phase. So here it is in the, uh, in the container. Uh, we've positioned it so that the, the top of the, uh, the grass tree will be almost just below the lip of the pot so we're not sinking it too deep we're having it if anything slightly proud and um, allowing for enough for us to put a nice dressing we're going to dress it with a layer of the of the grit or coarse pebbles now as we're doing it i've noticed that some of the top layer is just this um, composted bark and shredded wood now obviously i'm thinking as an instrument, this is pretty, pretty poor in the way of nutrients, and uh, and as it rots down, it's probably not the best sort of substrate. So I'm just taking off the top layer, and I'm going to replace it with our good compost. The roots of the grass tree are all quite a lot lower down, we've noticed. So um, I'm just going to take this top layer off just to tidy it up, and just to uh, actually clean it up a little bit. And I will put some of it. You can see here the original. Um, sandy uh, material that it would have been around probably in the wild. So um, here we go, we're going to just clean it up and then add our nice compost 50-50 ericaceous and Cornish grit. 
So as you can see, I have actually taken quite a lot of the uh, original compost away. Um, I didn't actually like the look of it that much. Um, and I've chosen to go down a little bit further than I would have would have suggested before and discovered that there are some nice fibrous roots. So it's kind of like there's two different root systems. There's the big, thick, fleshy ones, which probably help store water, I guess. And there's these smaller fibrous ones that come out from the side. So we've taken, I guess, about a bag full of the compost away. And we're now going to be adding our, uh, our nice uh, new compost which incidentally has got a very minimal um, amount of uh, slow-release fertilizer in it. Um, quite low phosphate. So I'm, I'm sort of thinking along the lines of, uh, of proteas and things like that, which I know are South African, but um, proteas, uh, banksias, obviously they're, they're uh, Australasian, uh, like uh, or seem to enjoy soils with low phosphate levels. So um, that's how we're going to play it. So here we are, we've put the compost in. We've allowed a bit of a gap because what we're going to do now is put a layer of the uh, of the grit. Um, I'm hoping for a layer of about a half, um, what's that, three and a half centimeters or something like that on top of the compost. So uh, let's just put that on. Nice uh, mulch, so this will keep it dry around the collar or the, the trunk of the grass tree. Um, it will afford a little bit of protection as well. And, uh, and also it will, it will look nice. And then once we've done this, we'll stand back, admire our work. Hopefully we've got it in the center of the pot and we can um, water it in. Now I'm not gonna feed it at this stage. I'm going to just water it in and leave it for the next um, three months. Where are we now? We're in July. So I probably won't actually feed it at all. There'll be enough nutrients in the compost and it can it can wait until the next spring before we feed it. And that will be um that'll be it. So potting of a grass tree, for example, or a presidio. We'll keep you informed as to how it does and obviously we'll be potting up some others and uh showing you how it works out and what what happens when um so far they've all behave very happily in the compost they're in which um, is great so I think they'll absolutely love this uh, this new blend of compost that we've uh, uh, we've developed albeit very simply 50-50 open peat-free ericaceous with a coarse, coarse lime-free grit um, such as uh, Cornish grit